My name is Alexander Skryabin. I was born in Moscow on the birthday of Christ in 1872. My life, my passion, my power. I am not a mere man. I saw myself a god among the everyday man. Some call me insane. <laughs> what fools. I saw beauty and color and spirituality where no man had ever dreamed to find it. Listen closely as I tell you the tale of my life. I had a good family growing up in Moscow, something that wasn't very frequent in the motherland. My family had firm military roots, which had been the legacies of my father and uncles. My mother... My mother... She died when I was still an infant, but I have been told that she could play the piano like a goddess. My father left me to be raised by my grandmother and aunts as he went off producing many half-siblings. My father was a lapdog. That's all I have to say about him. My Aunt Lubov would often play for me on the piano, and I would often beg her to keep going. The seed of musical inspiration had started to sprout in my mind, and the roots had taken hold of my soul. At the age of 13, I was a student to Nikolai Zvetiv, who taught me to play the piano and how to be a gentleman. I later entered the Moscow Conservatory. I fell in love with Chopin and remember sleeping with a book of his masterpieces under my pillow. I was considered quite gifted with the piano despite my small hands. I damaged my right hand trying to impress the student body. Foolish, but I was still young and ambitious. I wrote my first masterpiece, the F minor sonata, based on my damaged hand. I called it a cry against God, against fate, for I would continue to play the piano. No matter the cost. I graduated in 1892 from the conservatory with ease and won the little gold medal for piano playing. Those fools wouldn't give me a degree because I refused to be a lapdog and play the way they wanted me to. Why play music I am uninterested in? Such fools. <laughs> I met my first beautiful wife, Vera Ivanova Iskovic, in 1897, and went on tour throughout Russia and Europe. In 1898, after her successful concerts in Paris and other cities, I returned to Moscow to teach at the conservatory. In the winter of 1904, my wife and I moved to Switzerland, where the flame in my heart for her died. I grew fond of my beautiful former pupil, Tatiana Feridova Schlotzer. Over the years, we had several children. My son, Julian, died at age 11 in a boating accident. I don't want to talk about my son anymore. I began to realize my potential in 1904. I believed I had a purpose on this earth. A notion hit me. Music was simply music to most people. I dreamed of a union of all arts and all religion in an individual whole to form a new gospel with myself as the Messiah. Don't they understand? I am a God now. I began to work on what I believed would have been Armageddon. I called it Mysterium. It would have been a religious synthesis of all arts, which would herald the birth of my new world. Sadly, I only produced some sketches and notes of this powerful beast when my untimely death occurred. My death. <laughs> Gods have died in the past, and I was not going to be spared. I cut my lip while shaving and died of blood poisoning. Not as glorious as a death I would have wished for. And 43 years is too short a time for this earth to have known my presence. But I am immortal. I am immortal through my music. And 
my music is fire.